Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. So, hmm. Last week, something crazy happened. Say crazy, dramatic, say dramatic. Instead of sort of telling you what happened, I might as well show you because I caught it on tape. So, so yeah, last week this happened. So yeah, that accident managed to uh, break one of my light bulbs. There we go, look at that, look, it's absolutely smashed, doesn't work, and you know, I had to jump back on Amazon and order a new one. And if you do have any knowledge of photography and filmmaking and lights and stuff like that, you know, it's not cheap. That light bulb cost 16 pounds to replace. And you might sit there thinking, well, 16 pounds for a light bulb? That's the industry that we are in, and you know things cost a lot of money. That's the reason why we charge what we charge, and that we are trying to find different ways to be able to sort of float our day-to-day -day lifestyle of paying bills, school uniforms, coffee, everything like that. But then again, the equipment that we use is also quite expensive. I think I've got about almost two thousand pounds worth of gear just sort of like staring in front of me right now, and that's just to do what I want to do, regardless of the fact of anything or the add-ons that come with it. Right now, as a photographer, how do I make a living? And I thought I would share these sort of like little trinkets of information with you in this video. So how about you uh, grab yourself a coffee and we'll go and take a seat and we'll talk about ways that you can make money as a photographer. Everybody, welcome back to another video here at Better Media. My name is Nathan, and it's an absolute pleasure to see all of you here today. Thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail. Now, do you have your coffee? Are you ready for this video? Good, excellent, fantastic. Mm. Right, so what this video is gonna be about is ways that you could potentially earn money as a photographer. So even if you are a professional that you might know a few of these things already, or if you are in fact a hobbyist and you're looking to sort of a, expand your income a little bit, or B, take up photography as a main source of income. I'm hoping that what I tell you today is something that you find useful or something that you can sort of take with you and sort of have a little bit of a look in. But if you are a professional or if you are in fact a hobbyist in photography, you know that it's quite an expensive <laughs> hobby profession to be in. You know, the bog standard cameras do come in at like no less than 500 pounds. Then you've got the lenses, then you've got the audio equipment, then you've got the lights. And like I said in the intro, that that light bulb alone costs 16 pounds. Having to buy this particular type of equipment for what I do, YouTube, photography, the price sort of adds up a little bit. And it's the reason why we sort of charge the type of prices that we charge as photographers, as filmmakers as well, to sort of try to cover the type of costs. Because it's not just the gear that we have to sort of pay for, it's also the editing software that we use and everything like that. There are several ways that you can sort of like dabber. You don't need to just to be a photographer, you don't need to just to be a filmmaker. There are other ways that you can sort of try to bump up your income and I'm gonna sort of discuss them with you right now. Quickly on this whole platform that we're talking we're sort of viewing right now, YouTube. Of course, if you watch a lot of YouTube, you will know that YouTubers do in fact get paid for being YouTubers. I'm not quite in that bracket at the moment. With the ads that you see before and after and during a YouTube video, you will sort of know, or you might know that, obviously those ad, ad companies pay YouTube for the privilege of having their company sort of advertised on YouTube. And if they're on the videos, you may have seen one at the beginning of this video, or someone else's video, that a small little percentage of that money goes to the creator. Now you do need over 4,000 watch hours and over 1,000 subscribers to be able to qualify for this sort of income via YouTube, and I'm not quite there yet, all right? I think by recording this, I'm on about 438, 440 subscribers, and I'm quite close to the 4,000 watch hours. So I'm not quite there. So at the moment, I don't make any money via YouTube, of course. If you want to help me get to that target, please consider subscribing to the channel and that way you'll sort of help me earn another source of income. 
But how I make my money now is probably about 90% is client work. And I think that's the number one way any photographer or filmmaker will make a income through this type of platform. I spend a lot of time fishing for clients, sourcing out clients. I go on social media, I go on different websites, I go all over the place to try to find somebody who will pay me to take their photograph or pay me to make a video for them. And I've done everything from actors to dancers to fitness instructors to businesses who just basically want sort of portfolio shots for their website. And the thing is you've got to go out there and you've got to fish it. Now, even though it is the main way that I source an income, it does take an awful lot of work to do this. Like I could be chasing a client or sort of fishing for a client, it's probably the best way to put it, for days, weeks, months. And eventually they turn around and go, do you know what? I'm not interested or do you know what? I'm going somewhere else. And you do, you feel like it's frustrating because you spend all that time sending them out a budget, sending them an idea of what you want to do. And all of a sudden like, do you know what? I'm gonna go somewhere else. Or you know, we don't quite have the money for that. Or we've now decided, we're not gonna do it. And it does, it gets frustrating because sometimes you've probably got three or four of these sort of emails going along. You need to keep into your head what conversation you've had with that person, what conversation you've had with this person. And it does, it gets very, very sort of time consuming and a little bit confusing. But if you can get a ball rolling, if you can get a little bit of momentum going, all of a sudden, you know, word of mouth starts kicking in. These people could potentially write a review on your website or your portfolio or anything like that. And you can also get the hope of repeat custom. This is something that I don't hold on to quite a fair bit. I used to think as a portrait photographer, that was where I started off my sort of photography journey, whereas I would take portraits of actors and obviously next year they would need more headshots because obviously their body changes and then they would eventually come back to me and say, hey, you were great last time, can I do you again? But that doesn't necessarily always happen. But yeah, sourcing out client work is definitely the number one way that you will get paid as a photographer. It's not easy, and I'm not gonna sit there and pretend that it's the most simplest way of going, hey, you need photographs, I'll be your photographer. I'm still sort of like trying to convince people that you know, I'm the man for the job. And hopefully, as my reputation gets bigger, these type of people will start coming to me. And that is the main goal and the main aim behind trying to source client work. So moving swiftly on to a, another way how I make a little bit of money as a photographer, and that is stock video and photography. Hmm. Now stock video and stock photography, these are quite similar, but also there are a few differences between the two. So we will start off with stock photography because it's a little bit more simple to understand. And stock photography is exactly what it says on the tin. You are basically taking a picture of pretty much anything, you know, from a coffee pot, from a piece of toast, to a keyboard, to the mountains in Northern Canada, to the lakes of somewhere in England. Even the city of London of a phone box of uh, a car wheel, anything like this can be classed as stock photography. And there are many platforms that you can sort of like upload them on. And then what they will do is that they will sell them to advertisement companies. And then all of a sudden it might appear on a billboard somewhere. Now there are a few rules which comes into this type of thing. And it's like, if you've got a picture of a person, for example, if I'm sat there with my phone and I'm like, oh, look, this is a very interesting app on my phone. And you want to upload that photo to a stock photography website then obviously you need a thing called a model release which is basically a bit of paper that i have signed as the model that is giving you permission as the photographer to sell my image to a third party so then they can actually use it and you know i can't turn around and go oh, excuse me vodafone's using my image and i think i deserve some money no i've signed that bit of paper and it's to cover everyone's back you will not be able to upload such a photo onto one of these websites without a model release. And it goes the same for some buildings. If you are taking a city landscape photograph, for example, if you have many buildings and it's quite vast, nothing's quite prominent in that sort of like landscape, you're absolutely fine. But for example, the Shard, the Shard is copyrighted and owned. So if you're taking a photograph of that part of London and you've got the Shard, which is quite prominent in the foreground, 
you will not be able to upload that photo unless you have a building release that somebody who owns the shard has gone, yes, you can use my building, this photograph of my building to make money and so on and so forth. So there are a few little rules, plus the way that you edit them, they've got to be nice and clean, nice and crisp. Otherwise they can't be sold on and they won't be sold on, yada, yada, yada. So that is stock photography. I currently use Adobe stock because I have a membership with Adobe, I use Lightroom, I use Photoshop, so it comes already with my package. And in fact, I can actually upload straight from Lightroom onto my Adobe stock sort of portfolio. So it's a lot easy for me. And it's the same with stock video. Stock video is exactly the same as stock photography, but instead of taking a photograph, you are doing a video. Again, the same rules apply. If you've got a person in the video, you need a model release. And if you've got a building, you potentially might need a building release. And I currently use one called Black Box Global. And I will leave the links for these in the description down below so you can have a little look at what these companies do and what they can actually offer you. But please do again shop around and have a bit of a look what you can sort of, sort of test out into the waters. What I earn from these two different platforms isn't a lot, if I'm completely honest. Now that might be because I've only just started doing it beginning of last year. I was sort of like on and on if it's something worth that I want to do. But over the last two or three months, I've been uploading quite regularly onto these websites and I am now starting to see a very small steady stream of income coming in from these two platforms. What I see this at the moment is sort of bonus money. When I get an email saying, oh, so-and-so has bought your clip, we are now gonna send you this. It's like, oh, awesome, that's brilliant. I can potentially sort of like have that as a spare bit of money going forth. You know, that could pay for the shopping this month for, because also the pricing is very sort of strange as well when it comes to these things as well. You could sell a clip for 20 pounds or you can sell a clip for 200 pounds. It could be the same clip. It's just the way that the market works. So all of a sudden, it can start generating. It's a bit of a numbers game as well when it comes to these sort of stock videos and photos. The more you have, the more chances you're gonna to have to get sold and seen. So just sort of keep playing with it, keep going and keep going forward. But these are the two main sort of subjects that I earn a sort of income out of. It's stock photography, stock video, and client work. These next ones, well, it's up to you if you want to do them or not. They do earn me a little bit of an income. Again, it's not something I can retire on, but I'll explain the reason why I stick to it at the end of it subscribing. And yeah, so it is merchandise and printing. So merchandise and printing. Let's start with the merchandise first. Yes, in case you guys don't know, I do in fact print my very own t-shirts. Well, I don't print them, I design them. I have a merch shop. You can buy one with the Venom Media logo. You can have one that says the B Team, because you know, we're all part of the B Team. This wasn't plan A, plan B. And I've got other photography type sort of t-shirts, merchandise going through. And if you wanna have a quick look at them, they are in fact in the description below and yeah you know it's again not a sort of a massive source of income i have to do an awful lot of work on social media to try to push it forward i sell one t-shirt every two or three months but it is starting to pick up a little bit and i use a company called t-mill now t-mill are brilliant um mainly because one they are sensationally environmentally friendly absolutely brilliant their packaging the way they make the t-shirts the inks Everything they do is to sort of try to source and help the environment. One of the wonderful things that they do as well is that they do sort of deals every now and then. I think this weekend, which I'm filming now, but it can be all over the shop, is that they do buy one t-shirt, but get a tree. So if every product that is sold via their website, they will plant a tree somewhere in the world. It's a guarantee, you can read it on their terms and conditions on their website, is that every single product that they sell, they will plant a tree. So if they sell 100 products, they will plant 100 trees. They do the same as sell a, sell a t-shirt, they will clean the ocean. And they are part of these sort of communities to help build it forward. One of the reasons why I like working with them as well is because I don't need to do anything apart from design the t-shirts. 
Everything else is done by their factory. If you buy one of my t-shirts, they will print it for you and then they will send it to you. It's a worldwide delivery service as well, so you can go anywhere in the world. I've got a couple of viewers who have already bought one. Thank you so much for your support. And yeah, I don't have any upfront costs. Absolutely nothing. Of course, you can buy a premium membership so you can get more things on your store. I don't have that at the moment because it's not sort of like, it doesn't sort of cover the costs of me sort of make what I'm making out of T-Mill at the moment, but hopefully one day I will get to that stage. But it doesn't cost me anything. I don't have to have any stock at home. I don't need a printing machine. I don't need anything like that. All I do is sell a, uh, make a design and try to sell on social media or any way that I can. What do I get out of it? I get a percentage of the sale. That's pretty much it. It's not huge. Obviously, the more I charge for the t-shirts, the more I get. But then again, considering I don't have to do much of the legwork and what they do for as a company for the environment, I'm quite happy with the sort of like sort of relationship that I have with them and I'm more than happy to carry on sort of going forward and continuing with the way. You know, I have thought, should I bother making my own stuff, having stock, but the upfront costs are absolutely huge. But the percentage of what I get per t-shirt is quite small, but considering how much effort and work I need to go into making them, it's worth the while. The other side of what I do as well is that I sell prints. Most of my photographs are available to be bought and printed and sent to you. You can hang it on your wall and you can have a little bit of me in your home. And it's, for me to sell prints, it is very, very flattering for a customer, for anybody to want part of my work in their property, in their office, in their kitchen, in the living room. It's, I'm flattered. Every single time someone emails me or texts me, or message me on social media and go, listen, I love that photo. Are you selling it for a print? It, it's, of course I am. Yeah, if, if that's what you want, thank you so much. It, is, it means the world to me that you like my work that much. And again, I probably sell a print every two, three, four months. It's not something that is a huge, huge earner. I don't charge a lot for my prints. I think at the moment it's between 20 to 30 pounds, depending on what size of photographs you want and then I post it to anywhere in the world that it needs to go to. And you know, I've got uh, one in Australia, New Zealand, Holland, and various parts of the United Kingdom have all got my prints hanging on their wall. And it does, it really, as a photographer, to see your work printed is huge. I highly recommend any photographer print some of your work. Get it in a frame, hang it even on your own wall because it looks sensational. It really gives you that sort of like added oomph to keep on going. And when someone out there wants to buy one of your prints, it is literally one of the most happiest things in the world to know that it's out there on somebody's wall, and it does. So out of the ways that I earn money as a photographer, the client work, the stock video and photography, the merchandising and printing, it does sound like it's a lot of work and you've got a lot of pies and you've got a lot of fingers in those pies and you're trying to sort of juggle all these different things. But you'll find that a lot of creators actually do this. I literally cannot afford to live or support my family with photography alone. I can't just sit there and hope that I get enough clients in a month that can actually support my rent and my food bills. Obviously Phoenix has a very successful business herself so obviously it's not all on my shoulders she's doing it sensationally well with her business so as a partnership we're doing quite nicely but I can't for example next week I have four clients this week I've only got the one client I don't think I had anybody last week it is it juggles all over the shop so I can't guarantee that so that's the reason why I have these other little things that I can do on a quiet week, I can go out and I can shoot some stock video, I can shoot some stock photography, and I can try to sell that online. But if you take all of these sort of different avenues and you put them all into one bag, eventually that becomes quite big. If you sit there and you go, right, I've got four clients next week. Say I sell a clip also next week and then somebody wants a t-shirt. All of a sudden, next week, I've earned quite a fair bit. 
and over the space of a year, you add all that up and because there are several different avenues, all of a sudden you are earning a half decent income. So that's my advice. That's how I earn money as a photographer, stroke creator, filmmaker, and how I can afford to buy a 16 pound light bulb when I smash one. So, uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it interesting. If you did and you've got any other questions, please write them in the comments down below. And if you did in fact like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help out the channel. And guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Okay guys, thank you, bye.